Okay, we're going to try this again, uh, and I'll explain what that means in a second. We'll do a quick review of my watch collection before we start with the topic at hand. This uh, going from left to right, uh, this is a diesel watch. bought this watch because uh, it was large. My eyesight's um, close-up eyesight anyway is not as good as it used to be. So I thought a large dial, tell the time at a glance, whatever. The thing that annoys me about this watch is that with all this real estate, they've got a tiny, tiny window for the date, uh, which strikes me as a bit ridiculous. And I guess a picture doesn't really uh, um, tell the whole story. So when I got the watch uh, and saw that I couldn't read the date, uh, it was so tiny um, that, uh, that that irritated me a bit. And so I wear this watch only once in a blue moon. Next watch is uh, uh, Pulsar, which is a lesser brand of Seiko. Uh, I like this watch. I like the styling. It's a diver. Uh, and uh, the notable thing about this, even though it's a lesser brand of, of Seiko, it is remarkably accurate uh, in terms of it not losing much time uh, year over year uh, uh, for a, a simple quartz watch. Uh, maybe I got lucky. Maybe that's by design. I don't know. Um, but again, impressive accuracy with the time. I adjust this watch usually only once a year. Uh, next watch is uh, the first of the G-Shocks. This is a G-Shock Golfmaster. Uh, very nice watch. In fact, I was wearing this watch today. And um, uh, so uh, happy with it. Um, nothing really notable there. The next watch is uh, the G-Shock Pathfinder. This was actually the first G-Shock that I purchased myself. And um, uh, it's a, a good watch for the trails and whatnot. Um, so, uh, um, you know, it kind of is what it is. Next watch is, uh, um, I'm not sure what they call this watch. I think they just refer to it as a uh, military watch. Um, but uh, it's another G-Shock. It's got the two, I don't know, the lighting isn't too great. Um, but it's got the two little windows on the bottom. Um, and uh, it's got a nice strap. It's got a cloth strap to it. And uh, that cloth strap can be uh, very comfortable in the summertime when it's hot. Uh, moving on to the next one. That is the uh, um, G-Shock Mudmaster. Uh, great watch, um, wear it often, a uh, bit bulky, and of course it's a rubber strap, so for me, rubber straps get a bit uncomfortable in hot weather, um, but nonetheless, um, I really like this watch. Uh, next watch over is a G-Shock uh, Gravity Master. I think they call this the Sky Master, or Sky Cockpit, I think. Um, and again, very similar to the Mudmaster in terms of what its looks um, and uh, a, a nice watch uh, in its own right. I was wearing this one last week. Another uh, G-Shock, this is an, uh, another Gravity Master. Um, and uh, the, one that, the thing I like about this watch is it has a plastic bracelet. Um, which makes the watch uh, quite light and very comfortable. Uh, no complaints there. Um, next watch is the Sunto Core Black. Uh, great watch, great tool watch, very comfortable on the wrist. Does have a rubber strap, but it's very, very light. Um, in fact, it, it's surprising how light it is. Uh, it has the rotating bezel um, as well. And um, I wear this watch uh, pretty frequently as well. Uh, I will say the one thing about the Sunto Core is that it is a battery hog. I usually don't get a full year out of a battery. Um, but uh, other than that, um, and the other critique is that the dial uh, face does scratch fairly easily. You probably can't see it in this video, but it has a small scratch in the center of the dial, which um, is a little annoying, but eh, what are you gonna do? Next watch is the first G-Shock uh, that I ever had, and uh, I'd already said the Pathfinder was the first G-Shock that I bought. This was a gift, uh, which predates the uh, Pathfinder, and it needs a battery, um, but um, uh, has held up over time. I believe this G-Shock has got to be at least 20 years old, and it's still going strong. Next watch is the latest watch that I purchased, which is uh, uh, Seiko Prospects 
I think it's a special edition diver. Um, I really like the looks of this watch and I wear it uh, quite frequently. Uh, it does work with business casual. So uh, when I'm in an office kind of setting, uh, I wear this watch uh, quite frequently. Next watch, oops, skipped it. Uh, next watch is uh, my Marathon. I think it's a G-SAR. Uh, it's certainly a, a one of the divers. Um, and uh, it's a wind-up watch and currently it's uh, run out of juice so it's not ticking but there are no problems with it. I did make the uh, paracord um, wristband myself. Uh, it took me three passes uh, to get it the right size and to get the knots um, configured in a way that I like them. Uh, but uh, um, again, it, uh, comfortable to wear in hot weather because of the paracord. Last but not least is the topic at hand, uh, which I have already um, taken care of in the sense of this watch needed a new battery. I videotaped the replacement of this battery, but unfortunately that video just frankly totally sucked. And so what I'm going to do for you guys uh, is show you the procedure up to, but not quite including, replacing the battery so that you know uh, what you need to do and what tools that you're going to need to accomplish it if you are intrepid enough to take a crack at it as I did and, and I just basically uh, winged this I did not see another uh, Boulevard precisionist in this in this particular model uh, out on YouTube in terms of how to replace the battery so I just kind of dove in head first uh, a bit risky considering it's it's not you know exactly a cheap watch. I think it retails these days for around 450 bucks new. But um, I figure, what the heck? It's just a battery. How hard can it be? Um, so uh, I replaced the battery on this. Uh, but again, as I said, my attempt to take a video of that uh, was a dismal failure. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to get the case back off. I'll show you where the battery is, and I'll talk about what I did to uh, replace the battery so you guys can decide whether or not you want to follow my footsteps. Um, so that's what I mean by we're going to try this again uh, and uh, we'll see uh, we'll see if this version doesn't come out a little bit better and, and at least a little useful uh, in terms of guiding you on how to get this battery replaced. So let's adjourn to a table and uh, we'll talk more about this watch. See you in a minute. Oh yeah, before I forget, uh, one more watch. That's an Orient uh, cheap um, uh, wind-up wrist watch that I purchased because I didn't have a watch that I can consider dress grade. Some people would argue that this watch is not dress grade, uh, but uh, it was good enough for me. I liked it. It looked. Uh, it, it had a classy look to it. I had to go to a wedding, and I I uh, felt that I should go with wearing a watch. And so uh, I grabbed this one for either $100 or a little bit more than $100. And that completes my uh, watch collection, all 14 of them. And again, we'll, we'll see each other in a minute. Alrighty then, we've uh, adjourned to my dining room table with the white, or slightly off-white, <clears throat> tablecloth. Uh, so I could demonstrate uh, this battery change exercise. Uh, before we get started with that, um, I went out on eBay, not eBay, I went out on Amazon, and I purchased this kit of um, watch parts, uh, watch repair tools, I should say. And it was only nine bucks, um, maybe some change to that but roughly nine dollars and uh, I got um, all of these tools and you're gonna need uh, some of these tools in order to do this job first you're definitely going to need the uh, jewelers grade screwdrivers and um, I would not recommend uh, attempting this job without having these on hand um, before you start. And you might also need the tweezers, so don't discount uh, their need because the screw 
that holds in the battery, which you'll see shortly, um, is very, very tiny. And uh, in order to manipulate that screw, especially if it comes out all the way, uh, you're going to need uh, those tweezers more than likely to get, <coughs> excuse me, that screw back in position. So having these tools on hand before you start is very important. Now, this tool in particular, you're not going to be able to do this job without. This is uh, the, the uh, back plate removal tool, um, which uh, we are going to use to get the back plate off. And you're going to have to have something like this. And since this is a relatively expensive watch by most people's standards, uh, obviously there are people out there who, who wear multi-thousand dollar Rolex watches or Omega watches. But um, um, I would not try to improvise a tool to get the back off. I, I would get um, this tool or buy this kit. And um, I will uh, post the link uh, to Amazon in the description of this video. Uh, so you can buy it if you want. Um, I don't have an Amazon store set up, so I don't get any money for that. I'm just passing on knowledge uh, to try and be helpful if I can. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And again, I've already replaced this battery. As you can see, the watch uh, seconds hand sweep is, is working just fine. And I'm not going to actually remove the battery when I take the back of the case off. I'm just going to show you how it comes off. And then I'll show you what that battery area looks like um, so that you know what you're facing uh, before you decide whether to plunge in on this or not. Since I think you can get this watch for around the high 300s uh, on certain websites uh, between like 300 and let's just say 350 is a low to uh, maybe 425. So it's not a cheap watch by any stretch. And I've, I saw one comment on the internet uh, where the, a guy was claiming that he was charged or quoted, I, I, sh I think it was quoted, a, uh, 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 by a jeweler uh, to replace this battery of $125, which is one quarter of the cost of the watch, right? So if that was true, you know, pretty expensive to take this to a, a jeweler. And I think, in my opinion, if you're uh, tactile, if you're handy uh, and understand mechanical things and you're not, a, a, um, you know, an impatient type of person, you can replace this battery by yourself. So um, my last attempt to do this video, my hands got in the way. I couldn't keep the, the watch in the field of view and all of that fun stuff. So let's try it again and uh, we'll see how far we get. I am zoomed in a little bit. Um, and the orientation of this camera is such that it's really hard for me to see the viewfinder uh, in order to tell if I'm still in view. So we're gonna give this a shot and uh, see <clears throat> if I can uh, stay within the camera view. And so, Let's uh, let's try this. So on the back, probably a good idea to open the clasp if you're really ambitious. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I have an allergy that's making me cough. It might not be a terrible idea to take the strap off. Um, but uh, anyway, on the back of the watch, if we can see this, you'll see that there are tabs um, or or cuts cutouts um, along the perimeter of the backing, um, and it's sort of like a, a large nut, if you will, um, with a special pattern to it. And what this tool is going to do is we're going to adjust it with this center um, adjusting screw, I guess, and um, uh, fit this tool in between both sides. Um, of the backing plate and then we're going to use this kind of like a wrench uh, to uh, twist the backing plate uh, or, or the is it the bezel <clears throat> I don't know but we're gonna use this to twist the backing plate off once we get it set and here it is again 
there's the tool. It's set in between two of those um, notches, if you will, so that we can now twist uh, the backing plate. Let's see if we can do this up close. <clears throat> so, come on, where are you? All right, there we are. And we just twist counterclockwise. There it goes. And to loosen the backing plate. <clears throat> And we continue uh, to twist. Where are you, camera? Let's not screw this up the way I did the, the other time. And we continue to twist until it's loose enough that we can take the back off without uh, needing the tool. So, uh, and I think that's it. <clears throat> yeah, so now we just continue to turn counterclockwise until the backing plate is completely free and there there it feels free to me okay so so there's the backing plate pretty heavy um, there's no gasket to worry about on the on this um, plate itself uh, the um, the gasket is inside where are you camera come on is inside there now let me talk you through this. Come on. Okay, I think it's in focus. So, let's, can I keep this wristband out of the way while I talk here? Let's get out one of these screwdrivers so I can use it as a pointer. Mm, come on. <clears throat> use a finer one. Okay. So, this is a plate that is covering the battery. In order to get at the battery, you have to either do one of two things, and here's where I'm not completely sure and you're gonna just have to experiment. You're either going to have to loosen this tiny screw up here and um, loosen it enough so that you can slide this cover plate from underneath the screw and then remove the plate to gain access to the battery or you're going to be forced to completely remove this tiny tiny screw so that the backing plate pops off and then of course you're going to have to reinstall that screw ever so carefully um, uh, after you get the battery back in. <clears throat> so this is really the key point here in this battery replacement step which is you've got to get this plate off in order to get that plate off, you either have to loosen or remove this screw right here and uh, then replace the battery like you would any other battery. It does kind of snap in, so it takes a little bit of finagling to get it to seat properly, but eventually you will do that. And then after you replace the battery, you need to get this um, plate back in position so that it holds the battery in place. Now, when I replaced this screw, uh, or, or when I replaced the battery, excuse me, I removed this screw entirely. And I obviously got the screw back in successfully using the jeweler screwdrivers and the tweezers that I mentioned before. But it was, uh, I thought, a bit of a risky situation in the sense that it really is a tiny, tiny screw. <clears throat> and it is so, so easy to lose that screw while you're handling it, um, that there are risks. So if you have to remove the screw entirely, I would make sure that you are on a broad area like my, you know what I'm doing here with my uh, dining room table, a place where there's low risk of that screw going off into the netherworld, because if you lose control of that screw and it disappears, it's gone forever. And then you've got a really big problem on your hand because the 
um, the watch won't operate without this plate in place. The other thing that I would point out, and this is just a, this was a, a pure guess on my part, uh, and I took a chance. I took a chance on, um, on doing harm to this watch because there's very faint, slight printing on the back of the watch mechanism. And in one uh, of these sections, and I don't have my glasses on at the moment, I believe that it is this hole. There's a little note on the next to the, or, or lettering next to this hole that says push. And so I took my smallest jeweler's uh, screwdriver and I stuck it in that hole and I pushed and, and I with the assumption being that that was a reset button and that it was required in order to get the watch moving again. Uh, and again, that was a Hail Mary. I could have wrecked this watch doing that, and I'm still not sure that uh, it was the right thing to do, um, but, uh, but I, I did it. And, um, and it didn't, at, le at the very least, it didn't do any harm. Um, so that's uh, basically how you go about replacing uh, the battery on this watch. You gotta be really careful about this plate. Obviously you have to put it in the way that you the way it came out and you have to um, manipulate that tiny, tiny little screw, the smallest screw I've ever worked with actually. Um, and uh, hope and pray that it doesn't uh, just disappear on you. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically it. And then after that, it's just a question of putting the backing plate back on. And the way that you do that <clears throat> is the same way that you got it off. Put the black backing plate on, let it sit down, turn it by hand until you are confident that you've got it started properly. You know, it's not cross-threaded. And once it's gone in, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. I've lost my vision, but now it's snug. And then again, we take our tool. We find two of those um, notches, if you will. And where they go? And we make sure that the back is good and Tight. And when I first took this back off, I will tell you that <clears throat> it was on pretty tight and it did fight me quite a bit uh, coming off. So I'm not bashful about putting some juice on the back here to make sure that it's tight. And then that's it. And I believe, and now I'm going by memory and not by the book, I believe to restart the watch that... Uh, I think this is the button that I pressed to get the watch to start going again. Because when I initially turned it over, I was slightly panic-stricken that the watch wasn't wasn't um, uh, ticking, if you will. And I pressed um, these buttons. Or do I have the watch backwards? It might have been. No, nope, this is this is top is this way. And I believe it was this button that I pressed to get the watch to start sweeping again. Um, so uh, that's uh, basically it for changing the battery on this watch. And uh, I hope that this um, uh, little video was uh, educational for you in terms of uh, helping you decide whether or not you want to ta tackle uh, changing the battery on this watch or if it is better to take it to a jeweler um or not but uh anyway you know pretty much what's in, involved uh and again i can't uh, stress enough that i'm still not sure whether uh putting that screwdriver in that little hole that said push uh, was the right thing to do uh but um i did do it um for uh for poop and giggles as they say so that's the deal. So thanks for watching the video and uh, good luck with your battery change. See ya. Bye.